Clearly, instead of metamorphosis, life begins on the star itself. Intermediate age stars are the dust clouds, and they're older, obviously, than the young stars. Dust grains enter into the intermediate age star, and they're dim enough and they're not energetic enough to eject the material out on their own without having to be irradiated or ripped away by a younger, hotter host. The mixing atmosphere of Jupiter shows there is a lot of chemistry going on in there. If carbon dioxide and water are next to each other and light is introduced, they can form sugar and oxygen. Photosynthesis is one of the very first processes when it comes to the formation of life. Since there are no organelles to produce the glucose, as life has not had enough time to evolve and no plants are available, the reaction occurs sporadically and in huge quantities without organization. As the star evolves, the reactions, which are more complex, occur more often, as the heavier, synthesized molecules sink into the star. Chemoclines, which are different levels of different types of chemical reactions and chemistry in immediating fluids such as water, form inside the atmosphere of the star. As material is synthesized and formed, it's heavier so it sinks and then it can react with different types of elements and molecules and it sinks even further, it reacts with different types of elements and molecules on that level too. Now, what the chemoclines are depends on what stage of star or stage of evolution the star is in and how much material it's lost. The surface area of the uranium or the surface area of Neptune or Jupiter or Saturn is way, way, way larger than the Earth. If it has the elements there, if it has the molecules there, and they get sunlight, they're going to make a whole hell of a lot of different chemicals. The intermediate age star has a mechanical means to mix the material. We can actually see the mixing of this material, and we can also see the material entering through large impacts. Iron nickel meteors, which serve as catalysts, entering the atmospheres of middle age stars such as Jupiter and Saturn. You have your Jupiter, or similar star, you have your asteroid, it has a very small surface area. It slams into it, and what happens is three specific things happen once it slams into it. The iron enters into the star, formaldehyde's already present, and it breaks up to increase the surface area for increased rates of reaction and larger, more complete reactions. Pieces of that iron catalyze the reactions. It'll cause those formaldehyde molecules to combine together, and boom sugar. Of course, if you're going to have chemicals combining, you're going to have a process to break them apart again, and that's photo dissociation. High energy photons, high energy UV light, gamma rays, that stuff can break apart those bonds in a cinch really easily. The simplest biological reactions occur without organization in the atmosphere of a star first as the star evolves. Organization comes after the chemical reactions take place, and they become biological as organization occurs randomly. The black dwarf star that does not have a magnetic field cannot protect the life that it forms. If there's no magnetic field, then chances are there won't be any water. It will just be a dead world. <laughs>